I've been doing a research project for three years now, so I'm in my final year of my PhD. Um, I'm working with the largest producer of radishes in Britain, that's a company called GE's, and the project's funded by the Horticultural Development Company. And uh, I've been looking at splitting in radishes, so the problem with splitting is that there can be up to 30% loss of a harvest and due to splitting, so I've been trying to find out the um, environmental and physiological reasons for the radishes splitting. <laughs> It might surprise you, but there's not an awful lot of research done into radishes, um, particularly the small red European radishes. So um, I found a research paper that had been done into the larger white um, radishes, which are grown more in China and Japan and places. And it seemed that there might have been a trend with um, water and irrigation during growth that's affecting splitting. And talking to the farmers as well, they, they seem to say that when they've had high periods of rainfall, then um, they get more splitting. My first year I did quite a lot of experiments into irrigation in radishes and I found that high levels of water during growth affect splitting. And again, talking to the farmers, um, there seem to be different cultivars which split more, so I've done that as well and I've shown that certain cultivars definitely split more than others. Um, and then I've been looking at post-harvest effects this year on splitting. So I found again that high levels of um, water in the hypercotyl post-harvest make the radishes much more susceptible to damage from puncture and dropping and crushing damage. Initial experiments where I grew radishes at high levels of water content made them split. So high levels of water content, um, I got about 65% splitting rate, whereas if I grew radishes at really, really low levels of water, just above permanent wilting point, I got about 2% splitting. So obviously water's having a really dramatic effect on splitting in radishes. I wanted to see if there was a particular growth stage within the radishes which was more susceptible to splitting. Um, and again, because there's not much research done into radishes, I had to look at the growth stages. And I found that there's um, a really interesting growth stage which happens around day 17, which is called secondary thickening. And at this point, the outer surface of the radish, so what had been like the red surface, the exodermis and the cortex, so at this point um, rupture and slough away, revealing the periderm. And it's the periderm which is splitting um, later on. So all splits happen after day 17, and radishes typically take 27 days to harvest. So all splitting happens in the five or 10 days. But it seems to be the water content before this point that is making them split. So it's the water content on day 17 and secondary thickening which then determines how much they split later on which has been really interesting and because you can see secondary thickening without destructively harvesting the radishes it means that the farmer can then go and measure the water content at this point and predict how much splitting they're going to get post harvest. My research is going to mostly help them with predicting because obviously they can't prevent rain so if they can measure the level of water in the field at this point then they know how many people they're going to need on the line taking out the split radishes post harvest. It can also be used in breeding so it can be used as an assay so if you want to breed for a, light, a, a cultivar that's going to not split very much then you can grow them in these high splitting conditions and look for cultivars that are more resistant. Um, my post harvest research um, is going to be helpful potentially to the farmers because um, I've shown that at low water content, so if you handle the radishes when they've got slightly lower water content, so they're not wrinkled or horrible or anything, but if you just reduce it by a couple of percent, then they're much more resistant to splitting post-harvest, so it might be better to perhaps leave them for like a few hours before handling them. It would definitely be interesting to look at the genetic component, so there's definitely differences in different cultivars, and it would be interesting, because there seems to be a link with dry matter, so radishes which have a, a low a dry matter content seems to be more resistant to splitting post-harvest, um, and when I'm giving my dry treatments, this is also affecting the dry matter content of the radishes, so it would be interesting to see if there was a, a genetic component of this. But